what I want to show today is um, I, I want to take a look at this idea of drawing beautiful tropical fish with, uh, with colored pencil. And we are going to be looking at um, just a little bit about kind of sketching in the fish. The majority of what we're going to be doing is going to be looking at kind of adding rich, vibrant color to these little beasties. And so let me start just by dropping over to um, <clears throat> um, here we go. Nope, that's not it. I am, here we are. So I'm going to just share a few images of some tropical fish because, hey, tropical fish are pretty. Um, here is a beautiful blue tang. And um, so you may know this fish from Finding Dory. So, yep, that's the Dory fish. It's the blue tang. And um, hide floating meeting controls. There we go. So it's a blue tang. Now, this blue tang is chilling. It is feeling pretty mellow. And um, it's so it's the fins on its back, this one along the top here and along the bottom here, they're fairly smooth down, the tail is down. Now, if this fish gets stressed um, and, or it wants to display to another fish, what, what it does is it erects, it changes its body shape and erects the, um, the fins on the top and the bottom. So you see what was this goes whoop, right? And you can see that there's a spine right here with a membrane. There's another spine with a membrane. Back in this, now knowing that that's what's going on, you can see, oh, there's a whole series of little spines and kind of wrinkled up membranes in here. And when they do this, you see this full displaying fish. So when you're thinking about drawing a fish, you want to be thinking about, are you drawing a fish that's kind of freaked out and displaying, or is it chilling? And um, you kind of get the more dramatic look when the fish is stressed, but then you're drawing a stressed fish. fish. Um, you'll see if you watch fish in a reef or in a tank, very often when they will come up to each other, fish will do these dominance things where the fish will come up like, you know, I'm the big fish, no, I'm the big fish. And then one will turn sideways and like fan itself out and the other goes, yeah, you're the big fish and cruises off. So there's, this is a really kind of useful display. Here is, you see those fins up again. Do, 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 do. So there are the spines with the membranes between them. And look at the tail shape here. So this one has a tail that's in a little bit better shape and compare that tail with this tail or this tail. Um, so when the tail is really stretched out, then you see this, this full dynamic shape, but often in a more relaxed state, you're not gonna be doing this. So this, this, this blue tang is really, really showing off. So you're gonna see the same sort of thing in a bunch of different fish. So here you're seeing the fish kind of in its relaxed state and this full display mode fish over here. Very often scientific illustrators will draw it in the full display mode because they're interested in showing the structure and it looks cool. Um, but, uh, that, but if you draw, if you're looking, say, um, are trying to draw a scene of, of actual kind of life in a reef. If everybody's doing this, then all the fish are really, really stressed out. Um, we are going to, um, so in addition to these sort of fin, uh, finny shapes, we've got cool colors and cool patterns. Let's just drop back to this tang for a minute. So we've got some Really cool colors, bright yellows uh, and black on the tail, gives you high contrast there. And you, uh, we have a blue body with this neat stripe pattern on it. Here, the front end of this fish has this neat zebra pattern, the rest of the body is yellow. 
So different species of fish will have different colors. And how we're going to handle those with colored pencils will be a little bit different. The way we're going to approach this is going to be different than this is going to be different from this. So let me first just draw a little fish model on a piece of paper. And what we're going to do is then add some color to that. And I'm going to show, we're going to take a look at drawing a blue fish, a yellow fish, one fish, two fish, red fish. We're going to draw the red fish and the blue fish, well, and the yellow fish too. Um, and there will be, let's start, we're going to do, um, we're going to do red fish, blue fish, and then we'll drop over to the yellow fish because the way we're going to handle yellow fish will be a little bit different than blue fish and red fish. Mad props to Dr. Seuss. I am now going to share my camera here. And all you educators, I've got cool things to talk to you about in the next time we kind of get together and play. Um, here we are. So I'm going to block in three fish. And what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to have simplify my fish to three ovals. Oh, you can't see those very well, can you? Let's try that again a little bit harder. Now, when I draw my fish, um, so this is going to be um, red fish, blue fish, and this will be our yellow fish. I'm going to start with the shadows on this fish. And the way I'm going to start my shadows, um, I'm going to use a um, a Prismacolor pencil. This is the black grape Prismacolor pencil. And the color that it makes is sort of this dark, it's a very dark, dull purple color. But this is a really useful color to me because uh, you're going to see in a moment that it blends very well with, with, other, uh, with other colors and makes for some wonderful subtle shadows. And, and shapes on the side of my fish. What I'm going to do to get started is to give my fish here a little bit of a shadow. So I am going to, let's zoom down. I am just making tiny little circular motions with my pencil here. And I'm building up a zone of shadow on the underside of my fish. So if light is coming down on the top, the underside of my fish is going to be in shadow. And I will often do just little sort of circular strokes. I don't want my circles to really show up. If my circles show up too much, I you can make smaller circles. If I tend, I find that if I tend to do this to do my shadows, then sometimes I get these sort of little weird streaks in it, and those show up. But little circles tend to do that a little bit less. You'll get fewer of the surprise marks. And if you imagine, I'm going to make a little diagram of this shadow area. If my, if my shadow area occupies this space here, I'm going to make the darkest part of my shadow right about in here towards the bottom of that area, but not all the way at the bottom. So I don't want the darkest part of my shadow to be at the bottom of this shadow zone. 
because I want to give a little bit of room for what we call reflected light that's going to be bouncing back at the underside of this. So I'm going to put a little shadow, darker shadow in there, but it's not going to be all the way at the, at the edge. So there's a little shadow on my blue fish. Now what I'm going to do with this black grape pencil is if this, some fish like that blue tang, the scales are very, very small um, and it's hard to see the scales. On other fish, you will see the scales really clearly. What I'm going to do is I am going to make some scale marks across this little fish shape. And I'm going to do that, draw in those scales with this black grape pencil. Um, and the way I'm going to, let me just draw another oval here. And I'll sort of do a, a, a diagram. Um, this upper area in here is going to be in light, the, the highest highlight, and that's going to make it difficult to see um, the edges of my scales. And down here in the shadow area, that's where I'm going to get more of my, my, my shadow marks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a series of lines that are curving up like this around this belly zone. And those, those lines are going to get, they're going to fade out towards the top. And I'm going to then overlap those with another set of lines that are coming down this way. And what I'm going for is a set of little diamonds towards the belly of this fish. It's going to allow me to get sort of rows of scales that are aligned with each other. So let me now, so I'm going to draw a little line kind of coming up. And as I come up with this, towards the top of that line, I fade it out. And actually what I'm doing with my pencil is I'm getting lighter and then I also sort of start skipping. So it kind of goes lighter line and some then a few dots. That helps you kind of get the sense of this line petering out. So I'm lifting my pencil up more as I come up with this line. By the way, I'm leaving out a few details on this fish, like its head, like its tail, like the fins. For this little study, I'm just thinking about kind of the patterns you're going to, going to get on the body. We'll draw a whole tropical fish in just a little bit. Right, so now I'm going to do the come the opposite direction. Let's get this over to the center of the screen. And I am going to. this way. And the, the angle that these scale rows are going to go changes right when you get to the edges. And so what I'm, and that gets confusing. I'm actually just stopping my lines before I get to the edge of my shape. Jack, there's a, um, a clarifying question about your, what you're doing right now. You're just showing us the technique of how you would draw scales and not specifically from a, a particular fish, right? Yeah, I'm going to do, uh, this is going to be a rather small scale fish. I'll do a larger scale fish on the next one. Okay, um, great. But, now someone yeah, was so asking. This, this, yeah, this is just kind of a generic, generic fish, a generic reddish fish. So once I've got this on there, I'm now going to color it red, but I'm not going to color it with red. I'm going to get out a few other pencils here, and I'm going to build up some color. 
I want to look at the, the, the reds in my fish and sort of see where they're more orangey, where they're more, um, where they're more red, where they're more magenta, where they're more yellow. And I'm going to build those up. So I'm going to take my, I'm going to start with my lighter yellow pencil and just give this fish a light coat of yellow. Now I don't press all the way down because I don't want to smooth my paper out. I don't want to burnish my paper smooth. Now you imagine if I was drawing a yellow fish, this shadow zone and scale zone would probably be a little bit too harsh. This would be showing up way too much. We'll kind of handle how do you do sort of shadows and scale patterns on a yellow fish in a moment. But remember, this is for a red fish. This is just a, this is an undercoat of color. And I can build that up with more color. So here I'm putting a little bit of orange on top of my yellow. And I'm going to put a little bit of magenta. This is a polychromos pencil. Their best magenta, they call it fuchsia. So if you have a set of polychromos pencils, you want to also get yourself a little fuchsia pencil. I am going to now put magenta on top of that. And if you look, there's still kind of some grainy paper that is showing through. That's because I'm not pressing full pressure with this. Looking at my shadow and, and scale points, they're a little bit too pale in there. A few places I can kind of reinforce those lines. Or what I can even do <clears throat> is I can come along and draw. I can see my little scale patterns, those little lines made by Xs. I can come along and draw in some of my scales along those edges of those lines. And what I like to do is a few places in my drawing, draw in some of those scales so that people will then see those sets of diagonal lines as being scales. But I don't usually draw in every one over the entire thing. Just a few little places will be enough for people to say like, oh, those are scales in that. The final, actually, I'm going to add a little bit more orange to this. At the end of um, a little sketch like this, to get my colors to be nice and vibrant, I'm going to pick one of my lighter colors. So it could be my yellow here. It could be my, um, my, my orange here. And I am going to just press a little bit more forcefully with that. And so you see, as I press down here more forcefully, I'm finally flattening out my paper all the way. And I'm getting a zone here at the end of really bright and vivid colors. Uh, 
I also could have done this sort of final burnishing with orange. And I'll do this, this little section here with orange. So we'll just sort of see how that looks. Now it's going to make this thing much more orange, but those other colors will still show through. You want, you want in a colored pencil drawing to have little hints of all those other colors kind of dancing through. Let's try with the magenta over here. I burnish with that. So when you get into that set of shadow area where you have the black grape, there's just a darker tone in there. So I could do my sort of final burnishing with any of those colors. Bring a little bit more yellow back into here. And that makes for a much more kind of interesting um, color and pattern than just it's orange and you just have one orange. I want very often if you have a bunch of different colors sort of bouncing around in there, visually it's a lot more of an interesting subject. I'm now going to do the same thing here with blue, where I'm going to take a black grape pencil. And put it in an area of tone. Get a little core shadow area in there. And this time I'm going to make this be sort of larger scales. So I'm going to have these lines. further apart. And then I have a, another set of lines that is going to go diagonally across those. So I'm not really kind of making them come all the way to the top. And these are going to be my scales. So on a few of these, I'm going to turn some of these into scales. And the scale becomes a little bit foreshortened as it comes here. So you see how this X gets smaller in there that makes you feel like the, you've got some of these scales starting to kind of wrap around the edge of the body. This also kind of gives you this pine cone effect. And this trick works for drawing pine cones. I'm going to do one other little kind of uh, detail in this, 
uh, something that artists call snodgrassing. So snodgrassing is sort of a shading technique where two lines kind of come together like this to put just a little kind of accent of dark in where those two lines come together. So if I put just a few little kind of in these sort of joints right where a bunch of these guys come together, a few of those in there get a little bit in that point, just a little bit of a darker, Sound. So that dot then just sort of suggests that there's another one of these little joints right back in there. And now I am going to make it blue. So this will be my, my blue fish. I can just color right over on top of this. Those scales show through. I'm going to, in this upper area, even area where I don't press as hard with my pencil, let more of that color of the paper show through. So here's a coat of blue. Sometimes I'll also kind of outline the object with the local color. Got a few different blue pencils and a purple pencil here. And just to make this sort of more visually interesting, I can add in more colors on top of. on top of that. You see it right up here on the top of my fish. I'm gonna leave an area up there where I'm not gonna press as hard. I'm gonna leave a little bit of room there for some light to be hitting the top of my fish. But those, the sparkle shows through. I could take um, that light blue pencil and do my burnishing with it. Um, another kind of interesting, um, an interesting tool is this pencil right here is what's called a colorless blender. It is a pencil that is made entirely of wax and there's no color in it. So if I just kind of wiggle it off on the side here, It doesn't really do much, but you see, if I start rubbing that over the drawing here, what it does is it burnishes down all those colors that I have, blends them together, That gives you a much brighter, vibrant fish. So here's the unblended side. 
here is the blended side. And you can see how in this blended zone, you're like, whoa, that's really vibrant. And bring that same blender up into here just to smooth part of this thing out a little bit more. But because it's already been burnished, there's not much of a change. So I often do, you can just sort of do your, all your burnishing just with, with this tool. You also, as an alternative, could do your burnishing with a white pencil. But that will make whatever you have a little bit more pastel. Let's just, as an experiment here, take a look at what that looks like. See, it's also smoothing and burnishing, but it is turning this to something that's just a little bit more pale. The burnishing and smoothing you do at the very end of a drawing. You see this side here, Is more ghosted out, but you can still see the scales. You still see your color. The one that's decided it's done with the colorless blender though, that's not the case. The last thing I wanna take a look at with these little kind of color samples is the yellow fish. If I, put shadows in with black grape, they're gonna overwhelm the yellow. So instead, um, this is a Prismacolor pencil, it's called Grade Lavender. And what it is, is a very kind of pale purple gray, like lavender, but gray, Grade Lavender. Um, and I am going to draw in my shadow with grade lavender here. This time for saving more time, I am making some more sort of broad lines and that risks, of course, things getting streaky. And now what I'm going to do is make that yellow. Oh, I forgot my scales. So let's go for a rows of medium sized scales on this one. So I'm gonna kind of come up, fade this. So just sort of medium spacing between these little lines here. Working these up across, I'm letting it sort of stop before it gets to the edges. So I don't actually have to worry about how is that, it's very kind of complex how they kind of wrap around the edges. So the easy thing to do is just to stop before you get there. And then I have my other row of scales that's gonna make sets of diamonds. Across. And I can turn some of those into scales.
I'm going to leave a little roof open here, a little zone in here where my yellow is not going to go. And then work outward from that. And the great lavender plays very well with yellow. So I can get a sense of that shadow and scales. I've got a couple of different yellows. One is a darker yellow. I'm going to try putting some of this darker yellow in here. Kind of hit the outer edge just to kind of crisp up that edge. And that in. Bring a little bit of orange in on top of that too. And then I can burnish it. Remember I did my burnishing with those two different tools. I've got my colorless blender. We'll do that on this half. We'll see how that looks. So we can get this rather bright yellow, still have those scales coming through. We still have the shadow coming through. I could leave it alone or I could burnish also with white. Let's take a look at how that looks. So that makes the whole thing much more pastel. So it's up to you um, whether you like that look, that look, or that look. And those are um, the colorless blender, no blending. Um, or actually, we could, let's try just with yellow in some of these areas here. I'm going to just kind of take my yellow, and push harder with that, and do some of my blending with that. So we'll get that. There we have it. So three different solutions for final burnishing. I used a light color yellow there, the colorless blender and the white. Of these, this one up here, I'm kind of the least pleased with. This one looks really blotchy to me. Um, one reason why it's kind of blotchy up here is that the paint in here is um, the paint is uh, sorry the 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 colored pencil is sort of really thickly applied and you're kind of getting this kind of a heavy layer of wax. You can sometimes repair that a little bit just with an eraser. If I don't like something that I've got. You can't erase colored pencil all the way, but you can get rid of a bunch of it, often to the point that you can sort of retexture that surface. So if I didn't like that, I can come back in 
and take out I can take out some of the um, the, the the color that I put in, and then reapply. That's smoother, that's better. So if I overworked in an area and didn't really like what I got, I can get some of that stuff to pick up and just kind of be able to go back in there and rework that. Now let's just put this, these, these ideas together on a little sketch of a tropical fish. And what I'm going to do, um, because I've, I'm going to need at another point Melinda to show me again her cool <laughs> techniques. Um, but for for this, I am um, just going to, uh, to 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 block out um, a a little tropical fish here. And Jack, could you push your page down or up just a tad? Is that good? Yeah, great, thanks. All right, so I'm drawing a little fish um, that has sort of a, a long body, a little stump of a tail. I often look at the negative shapes in between the tail and the, the body. This one I'm going to draw not really stressed out. So it's so it's little fins. Could you make the lines a little bit darker? Oh sure. So this one has, there's a black mask that goes up on its face. It has a cool little black throat. And it has a pectoral fin that sticks out on the side of its body in here. Another very interesting thing to look for on fish is something called the lateral line, which is a little line of sense organs that kind of goes down the side of its body, often rather faint, but if you can notice where that is, it's going to, to, to be a good thing. This fish has an eye that is in here, but the eye on this fish is very difficult to see because it is in the black. So my general approach with things that are difficult to see is that if you can't really see it very well, then I, I really de-emphasize it. Um, and a lot of people will kind of get in there and they, they know the eye should be in there. And so they draw in an eye and then that, you find that that eye is really kind of over, over-emphasized. 
Um, with this fish, it has um, its scales are very, very small, so I'm not going to really be drawing in scale detail, but there are shadows in a few places. So with my, since I'll be working with kind of a yellow fish, I am going to be drawing in where I have these darker parts and shadows. On the belly of the fish, and up onto its throat. I like to draw in my shadows first on a sketch. And I'm going to draw in a few little lines radiating towards this point of the tail here not really reaching it. There you go. So for the back part of my fishy body here, <clears throat> um, oh, actually, I'm going to have just do something that's just kind of a little bit of, of fun here. This fish in its little uh, pectoral fin here. There are fine little rays and they're very, very skinny, thin little lines. And I would like to show those. There we go. This little tool here is um, a um, an embossing tool. If I it's made for doing pottery. And if you don't have a fancy embossing tool, you can sometimes get away with just a ballpoint pen that is run out of ink. And uh, this has two little line ends on one side. There's a big, small side, and then there's a big side. And if I put a groove in the paper like that and then draw over it, I get thin little white lines. So there's a few parts um, of this, this fish in its fin here that I'm going to want to have that effect pop in. So in this little pectoral fin here, what I'm going to do is a few places in here, I'm going to just draw in here. Oops, that line didn't quite go where I wanted it to, but one disadvantage of this is once you put these in with the embossing tool, they are there. You're not gonna be able to undo these lines. All right. So I put in a few little flicked lines down in where this, this fin is gonna be. And that's going to give me little white lines in that area. Now, I'm going to start to just sort of draw in. So I will often just take the edge of whatever I'm doing. If it's a yellow fish, I will kind of reinforce that yellow along the edge here. And so this one has a sort of zone in here of white. But out here, I'm just going to block in my yellow that as you start to draw along, what's going to happen is the tip of your pencil gets blunt. That allows you to cover a lot of territory really, really fast.
So I'll often kind of reinforce the edge with whatever color I'm using. Color over those shadows. So there's the first course of yellow on my body. That's my pale yellow. So this is <clears throat> light chrome yellow. I also have a cadmium yellow, a darker yellow um, pencil. And I'm going to now come along some of these edges up here, reinforce that top edge, reinforce this bottom edge. Oh, Jack, just so you know, um, it's 102. Um, just wanted to be mindful of your time. Ah, thank you. No doctor appointment this time, at least. Um, but I am trying to get myself to be, uh, I want to start moving myself towards ending on time. Um, what I want to do is just, I'm going to do a little bit more into this area here, put some burnishing on this, and um, maybe we won't finish this entire fish, but hope to give pe people sort of a little bit of a sense of kind of how this, this might go. For this little fin in here, I can get a little bit of some dark along its edge. This fin has a top edge that is dark. And I am drawing kind of flicking in. So I have those white lines and some of these yellow lines it will help me kind of define where this little side fit in. But you can see how you get those, those white lines still show through. I just want to put some burnishing on this body so you can see how bright it then appears. So this part out here, I burnish down on that. It's now vibrant. This part up here in the body, maybe what I'm going to do is remove a little bit of that, the pencil that was in there, just to give the upper part of this body a little bit, make it a little bit lighter. But it's exciting to see how the kind of the, the glow of the body starts to, to really pop out when you let me get in there and you burnish that down. The front of the face of this thing is black and white. And so to, to, to show that, I could either put dark behind it so that the white edges would pop out um, another thing I can do is just to use just perhaps a slightly, for instance, this thing's going to have a white 
chin. If I just use that shadow color in there and give it a crisp edge, or here along the forehead, I'm gonna come in there and give that more of a crisp edge with this sort of purple pencil. Then, the black zones. will contrast against that. This is here, I'm just using straight up black grape instead of a black pencil. Gives a little bit of color into that zone. I can then also take a, there's a, a dark blue pencil. I can put that into the black zone as well. And what I'm going to get is a black zone that just is a slightly more interesting color instead of just jet black. There'll be a little bit of color bouncing back from that. I'm going to put in this, this, this fish has a sort of a throat and belly saddle. So it has dark that swings up in here. And I'll do the same thing, sort of making my black first with my black grape. That's that sort of dark purple. And then I'm going to go back in over that with my dark blue. You really could put a bunch of different colors into that. We'll just experiment with that in a moment. You can make your blacks very Interesting shades. Um, see what else do I have that's dark. Here's a, here's, a, here's a dark, here's a dark brown. I can put some of that into the black as well. Crisp up some of these edges here. There's a little tropical fish. I am um, if you look at there's a, a, a few parts of this that are sort of just feeling a little bit too um, indistinct and non crisp like out here on the tail and right here under the throat. Maybe a final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just come back in with um, with the pencil at the end and just hit the edges to make it kind of clear sort of where 
where my, my drawing is and isn't. Right here under the throat. I don't think that that shadow is enough. At the end of the drawing, you can also come in and this is a, 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 a Presto correction pen. It's essentially a big tube of whiteout. And I'm going to come in and just put some whiteout essentially under its throats to make that part a little bit more clean. I can put in a little bit right in here. Um, so you can use this to cover up parts of a drawing that kind of splurched out of where you wanted it to be and make your drawing a little bit cleaner at the end. Essentially white out in a pen. And there's a little bit of tropical fish. So we've looked at um, with a red, blue, and yellow. With yellow, we used that grayed lavender. With the blue and the red, we were blocking that in with um, black grape. We also used a colorless blender and a white pencil for burnishing and looked at the, the differences that we got with, with both of those. And, um, and there's a, that allows us to get really vibrant, bright colors, which uh, is really fun for little tropical fish. There's one uh, kind of conservation note that is important for us to be aware of as we are, um, hold on, FaceTime, there's my camera. Hi. So there is a, um, one moment. So um, after Finding Nemo and Finding Dory movies came out, um, having a tropical fish tank became much more popular. A lot of people started their own fish tanks. If you keep a fish tank at home, something that you want to consider and really look into is how were those fish sourced? Where did those fish come from? The, a very common practice is for uh, for people to take, uh, to, to swim out to, or take a boat out to tropical reefs and pour cyanide in the water, um, either by the barrel taking out all the critters in a reef and then scooping those up and the ones that aren't dead and only stunned selling those um, for the tropical fish trade, or swimming down underwater with a little squirter bottle filled with cyanide mixed with seawater and squirting that in front of the fish, stunning it or possibly killing it, and then scooping that up and bringing it back. So there are millions of tropical fish that are brought into the United States every year because of this method. The method is illegal, but it's unregulated. Well, it's, 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 it's regulated, but unenforced. And so if you are considering um, a tropical fish tank. It's important to to resource to, to, to research how did these fish get here, and um, and how um, and if if that was was a, a possibility. And if you're not sure, and if the people at the fish store 
can't give you um, reliable, reliable information about the sources, I would avoid those as pets. Um, the cyanide that is poured into these reef systems, it kills both the coral and a bunch of the fish. And these reef systems are, they're essentially the nurseries of the ocean. Many even open water fish will lay their eggs into these reefs and um, a healthy reef system means uh, is, is really good for, for healthy oceans. So do, um, th their tropical fish are lovely and they're beautiful, um, but an inexpensive, beautiful tropical fish probably is an inexpensive, beautiful tropical fish because it came from a source um, that you um, would not approve of. And so as nature journalers and stewards of nature, these are things that we just want to have on our radar. So I hope you had fun today. I hope you got some new strategies for using your colored pencils and can press those into service, um, drawing your tropical fish and have fun with it. And, uh, and thank you for being with us today. I'm now going to, um, to jump over to our community cam. And if, there are, if there's anybody who would like to share um, artwork or inspiration, um, I encourage you to do that. Um, we're going to close this meeting at 1.30. So that means we have about 10 minutes for our, our community connection here. And so I'm going to just ask everybody to be conscious of, of how much time you would each spend um, in sharing something. I won't want to interrupt you, but I'm just ask, gonna ask everybody to be sort of conscientious of um, other people in the community that also might want to, um, to share that. Um, I am now going to remove my spotlight and jump to my gallery view. And I see Walters has been doing some fish drawing. So you're the reason that I um, uh, did this class. Um, I'm going to start with Walters. I see Ray Bonto also has a hand up. And I, um, there'll be uh, several other fo several folks here. This is going to be great. Um, where are, you are now able to unmute yourself. We're going to start with. Walters, hi there, good to see you. Hi, hi. Uh, no journal shared this time, but I just wanted to share this book uh, that we found in Norway in a used bookstore. And uh, I've been looking through it and it has beautiful, beautiful fish drawings here. So for example, uh, this uh, chub and uh, lovely is also that they include what they eat. And oh, that's nice. And also uh, line drawings uh, in the environment that they live in. So that's, uh, that's beautiful. Those are beautiful illustrations. Could we see just a couple other illustrations from that? Yes, it's uh, it's always nice to go in a bookstore and find something. Uh, oh uh, yeah. Oh, that's really fun. That's really fun. Yeah, and the, in the book. Uh, Unfortunately, it's in Norve in Norwegian, so um, I don't understand it. Uh, but it's uh, it has, for example, it has uh, in the beginning the environments that uh, the fish live in, and uh, then come in the fish. They even include some of the uh, fly fishing flies that you can catch the fish on. Oh, that's um, clever. That's really yeah. clever. And. Also, what is nice at the end uh, here is uh, more, more fish, some crayfish. Oh, and also some birds. Kingfisher and what, what a beautifully done field guide. I love it when there's a guide to like a whole ecosystem. Um, that's, that's gorgeous. Yeah, there are two. This one is a fish uh, of rivers, rivers, freshwater, uh, freshwater fishes. And then there are uh, there's another book in, of saltwater fish. 
And then at the end also, how is how they catch the fish uh, and then how you can build like a fish way, fish bath. Uh, and then also how they ca catch and uh, tag the fish and all different uh, catching methods. So uh, oh, that's lovely cool. little book. Yeah. yeah, that's that's inspiring. That might be, you know, you can learn a lot from um, copying those sorts of pictures. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. The, oh, I just want to, I'm going to just sort of put in, um, kind of looking at this sort of reminds me of one other thing. I'm going to sort of join you on um, just one quick other thought here. Check this out. <clears throat> um, that's yeah, spotlight. So um, you will often see fish drawn this way. So here's here's a drawing of a fish, and then you'll see kind of a highlight of sort of where the light is 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 hitting the body, and a highlight on the eye in illustrations right and at first glance this sort of seems like and that's a that's a great thing to do um but a lot of this is just going to depend on what you are intending to show um and that but but just sort of be aware that in a lot of scientific illustrations you'll see these kind of highlights on the the side of the body you sort of imagine the sub the it looks more wet now right looks wet and slippery like a fish. And so we're like, oh, that's great. That's really cool to do. But just realize that what you've now drawn is a fish out of water. Because underneath the water, everything is, is wet. And you don't get that little sparkle line of highlighting light along the side of the body. Um, so, um, in if you're drawing things underneath the water and on the reef then so like the highlights would be appropriate on the salamander yeah because it's out of the water because it's out of the water if however you are drawing a fish and um so here is here's you know fish illustrations and I put that highlight on my fish, what I've now drawn is a fish that I've taken out of the water. So if you're catching a fish and then looking at the fish and going, what kind of fish is this? Then, okay, then it makes sense to have that little highlight on the water because that's um, on the top of the body because that's what you're seeing on the fish in your hand, right? But um, if you're drawing a fish underneath the water, these little kind of highlights, like I want to make the eye look wet, right? So I'm gonna put the highlight in there. Um, just um, avoid the temptation to doing that because you're then drawing a fish out of water underwater. And yeah, but you can also have a fish out of the water, for example, yes, if, you, right. if you catch it or something, yeah. That's right, so if you do this, then you're drawing the fish out of the water. So this yeah. that's kind of a good uh, distinction between fish in the water and <laughs> out of the water. Hey, I thank you so you much. For... Oh, you got uh, another book there? Yeah, I see what you, I just want an example. I, uh, this also have this book, a fish, and it also has uh, highlights uh, on it. So uh, like it's drawn out of the water. Yeah. Yeah. And you also notice that all those fins are fully uh, opened. That's sort yeah. of the convention in yeah, scientific yeah. illustration. So the scientific illustrators love to put the fish in the fins all the way out position because it's useful. You then see what the fins, the fin shapes are. That's often very helpful for identification. But yeah. um, just sort of be aware that what you're drawing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I am going to remove that spotlight. I'm going to remove this spotlight. I am going to go connect to who's up next. Um, I saw Ray Bonto had a hand up. Um, so Ray Bonto, let's uh, share something really quick here. Uh, or, okay. so. Oh, 
I like it. I like it a lot. I get um, just a subtle sense of the dimension on that. And I really like the um, color blending I'm seeing on your three um, fish orbs on the on that uh, other page. Thank you. Uh, I'll share my Nature Journal pages next time. I, I, that, I look, really look forward to seeing them. Have you seen more cool things with your pigeon friends? I draw a lot on flight. Excellent. I, I really look forward to seeing that. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. Thank you. Um, let's see. I am going to, um, Mary, um, it's, I'm going to go to Mary and then Heather. Um, um, yeah, I just want to share this real quick. I, it just happened to have come in the mail, um, yesterday, um, and in Nat Journal Natural Science Illustration, that's the Guild of Natural Science Illustrators, and um, which has a wonderful journal, and in it is an article of, for a deeper dive, much deeper dive for um, capturing the iridescence on um, fish. So anyway, this was sitting right next to me, and I just thought I'd share it. Oh, that's really cool. And so if people want to get this journal, they can join the Guild of Natural Science Illustrators. Right. I, I think I, I wonder if you can buy these separately if you go on their website. I would be surprised. Um, you just go on the website of uh, the Guild of Natural Science Illustrators. That's really cool. And I, 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 I have a feeling you could just buy if you were, you know, anyone here who really wants to, I mean, there's gorgeous illustrations in here. It's a, it's a great journal. I love getting it. That's, that's yeah. fun. That's, that's, okay. that, that's useful. Yeah. Okay. That was just a quick share. Hey, Mary, thank you so much. It's good You're to welcome. see you. Good to see you. Um, I am now going to jump over to Heather. I was going to, on the Nature Journal note, this book um, is called Fish and Enthusiast Guide. It is really neat because it is like a field guide. So it is encouraging you to go out and look in mud puddles and, you know, put so, and it's mostly, it's, it's a lot of freshwater fish too. So go snorkeling in, you know, in your, in your lake and you, you look at the fish that are around you, which it was kind of mind blowing to me because I don't normally think of, you know, everyone's got fish. And, and so this is a really neat book. And then the other thing I was going to say on the tropical fish note, I for many years kept a planted fish tank. So it was a freshwater tank with plants. Mm -hmm. It was, it was beautiful and it's its whole ecosystem and it's, it's really not a hard thing to do. Tropical fish are actually very difficult because I did have a tropical fish tank and it was too much maintenance. But um, if you think of the idea of keeping an ecosystem and you have more plants than fish, it just balances out really easy and it's just beautiful. So, and most of this stuff is all captive raised. So if you're staying with the freshwater, it's not only easier, but it can be just gorgeous. So, um, that's another thing to look into. That's great. And you also uh, mentioned in the chat, uh, what, what species do you know are captive bred that uh, people can safely? It's really interesting. If you look up um, saltwater fish, there just aren't, they're really, because of their life cycle stages, there's not as many. So it's, it's more like the gobies clownfish. If you get a clownfish, it, it's probably captive raised. Um, and both of those are really small, some angelfish, but not many. It's a big problem that has been a big problem for a while. So if you ask at the fish store or if you're buying your fish online, a lot of times you will be able to find, um, they'll be labeled. So, it, you know, like you go to a grocery store and you That's got great. the organic produce, it's, it's the same with fish. So you just have to know, but it's a much more limited selection. The only thing I would say to a positive is that most of them are small. So you're not gonna get the, um, the big fish that are just going to outgrow that you know, like the puffer fish that I think we talk which grow just huge it, clownfish you know they're only going to get that big so it's a lot more doable that's yeah. really cool thank you for for sharing yeah. that yeah. um Ivea, you found the um a, a link to a national geo article shoot okay. yeah I did um 
I did find one, but then it said that you have to enter in your email in order to read further, which I don't mind doing. Um, but I found a different one um, for the, um, what was it? Ecological, um, yeah, um, it was something, something to do with the ecological, um, okay, sorry, Center for Biological Diversity. And then they were talking about, about tropical fish, um, particularly like in, um, in aquarium trade and just some other things like that. So that might be something to read um, is oh, the one. Could, could you put a, a link to that in our, in our chat? Yeah. So, Jack, uh, this is just a time reminder. It's after 1.30. Oh, oh, I was almost made it. Um, so let, let's, yeah, let, let's, let's, we'll, we'll share, we'll, we'll, we'll share this little bit um, if we can. And so I, I put it into the chat. I haven't read it yet, but well, just something for us to read. So Center for Biological Diversity has a good article on that, apparently. Thank you so much for finding that. Um, the, I am going to just jump over to gallery view um, and um, we're going to go for one more journal um, to share with folks and then we will close, not quite at 1.30, but a little bit after it. Um, and Barbara, um, thank you so much for being with us and um, it's good to see you. I'm delighted to be here on Earth Day, especially be, um, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Good. Um, because um, I'm very concerned about the kelp deforestation and this week in my Nature Journaling Together class, uh, which is composed of kids from 11 up to adult, uh, we talked about the kelp deforestation and the various plants and animals that are associated with the kelp. And the, I wanted everybody to know that the Nature Conservancy has been working really hard to um, rebalance that ecosystem and that um, a memorial fund was set up in the name of my brother Scott and Kendra who died in the Conception Dive Boat Fire of Labor Day 2019. And so sorry. their legacy of all their work in marine ecosystems continues through the Nature Conservancy. And it's really great to sketch the whole ecosystem of all these, so many plants and animal, uh, animals, over a thousand animals are associated with the kelp forest. So since we're talking about marine life today, I wanted to share this with everybody. And thanks for giving me the opportunity. Oh, thank you for sharing this and for raising the, uh, bringing our attention to another system. If we um, wanted to find more about that memorial fund and learning more, learn more about uh, preserving kelp systems. Um, I can, uh, I can post a URL in the chat. Okay, and for people who are just watching, they would go to Nature Conservancy. Um, or, or what would be a good oh, thing to search for? Uh, it, it's a it's a subset of the Nature Conservancy, so I will post it. I can post it on the Facebook page too. Great, and and so folks, what, what you see here, you know, Barbara is interested in conservation and preservation of this this really rich system. Um, I think this is a wonderful example of the way that nature journaling connects to conservation and stewardship of the earth. Um, as we fall in love with these systems, um, may we take that love as inspiration to protect and be stewards of these, these, these systems. Um, like tropical uh, uh, coral reefs. Um, oh, so there is... Um, so this is, if you're looking for this online and you're just watching the video, this is the Scott and Kendra Chan Memorial Fund with the, is it the Nature Conservancy or a Natural Conservancy? Uh, oh, sorry, the Nature Conservancy. With, with, with the Nature Conservancy. Right. Um, and then this is and the there's a there's a link for it here. Um, you might be able to find that on, on online. Um, yeah, so the first, the first link is for the update on the work that has been done since the fund was started last year. And then the second link is to the actual um, donation page for anybody who cares to pitch in. That's great. Um, and um, in, in honor of, of Earth Day, um, 
anyone who is considering making a donation to me to support me um, teaching these classes today, um, I would um, I, I would like to request to to you that instead of sending that to me, and again, I, I really do appreciate everybody's support, um, but perhaps in honor of this day, um, rather than send it, a, a donation to me to say thank you, let's um, see if anybody is, in this group, if you're able to, to support the um, Scott and Kendra Chan Memorial Fund with the Nature Conservancy. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's a link for it there. And that might be a way which we can all um, uh, pay forward into a healthier environment. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm, I'm so sorry to hear of the loss of your family members. It happened just before the first wild wonder, but wild wonder number one got me through the first month of grief. So thank you for, and everybody in this community. It means a lot to me. Oh, well, thank you, Barbara. We're really uh, happy to be in this community with you. Yeah, it's great. Um, really happy to be in this, this community with all of you. We are in this together. Um, together celebrating the beauty and biodiversity of the earth, celebrating um, and working together to protect and to steward um, the, 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 the resources of this earth. I want to encourage anybody also who's able today to get out and celebrate that together by just do yourself a, the favor of giving yourself an opportunity to do a little bit of nature journaling. As an Earth Day celebration, you owe it to yourself. And what if you threw into your nature journal kit um, a, little, a little bag for picking up a bit of the trash in the area where you explore, just to make you leave that area just a little bit cleaner, a little bit better than when you got there. So when I go out exploring with the Adventure Girls, thing one and thing two, um, we always try to leave wherever we're exploring better than when we came. And I invite you to make that a part of your practice and your family practice as well. So thank you all. Thank you, Ivea. Um, thank you, Melinda. Um, Heather, really looking forward to your uh, program coming up on, um, on interpretation and, and, and teaching. Thank you so much for sharing that with the community. I am just delighted to be here with all of you, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>